Dracula. That's your daddy? It's a bad picture of him, but he'll show up after sundown. Zoinks! It's almost <laughs> sundown now, Scoob! Like that's when the vampires start fighting! Oh, no! Hello, and welcome to YCFT. It's Scooby-Doo time. Mm -hmm. and today we're taking a look at Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School, which mm -hmm. was released in July of 1988. Strangely, Reluctant Wealth was released in November of the same year. Yeah. So, big year for Scooby-Doo. What, yeah. what memories do you have of this one? Did, before we rewatched it, do you remember when the last time you watched it was? I can't remember the last time I watched it, but I would have been, I would have been a kid, definitely the last time. This is one that I, I remember it was on... Like Cartoon Network. Boom, or I feel like it was on Boomerang, Boomerang all the time. <laughs> a lot, and even even then, I if it was on, I would watch it. But it was never one of my favorites. Like in comparison to say, like Reluctant Werewolf or Zombie Island, Ghoul School wasn't. It, it was never my favorite then, um, but it was a lot of fun rewatching it. it. Was. I want to point something out actually. What? Similarly, with it might just be like this incarnation of uh, covers, but Shaggy does not wear that T-shirt. Shaggy doesn't wear the T-shirt. And wears is that... Scrappy. Yeah, Scrappy is also not there. Scrappy's not. Scrappy is more of a character in this one than he is in Reluctant okay. Werewolf. I will also say, I don't think that there's a scene featuring a cauldron in the. In the no, there, no, there isn't. <laughs> Definitely not with Shaggy and Scooby, anyway. Yeah, Shaggy gets a job as a gym teacher. As a gym teacher. So him and Scooby at this all-girls school for ghouls. For ghouls, but they're unaware that they are ghouls. They just yeah. think they're going to a, an all-girls school. Which look into that however you want. Yes. It is placed right next to a military school. school. for boys. I gotta say, whenever the military dweebs are on screen, it really annoys me. <laughs> They're so annoying. <laughs> they have a bit of redemption, <laughs> but... but yeah. So they, they've hired them to teach them because they play volleyball against the military school every year. Yeah. It's an annual thing. And they always lose. And they always lose. I will say, unlike Reluctant Wealth, which is all building up to the race, this film doesn't just build up to a volleyball match that lasts forever. There's yeah. a volleyball match, but there is another plot with a character called Revolta who wants to capture Revolta. the young ghouls because they are all children of famous universal monsters. Yeah. That bit does drag on. That... For a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I... I did enjoy rewatching it, but I also do not believe we are the demographic for this film. We are absolutely not. Like it, bec it became a little bit obvious when we rewatched *Reluctant Werewolf*, and it was abundantly clear by the time we were watching *Ghoul School*. Like we are not the age <laughs> bracket for this film yeah. anymore. I, you know, I did but enjoy it, is, it. It's a very charming film. Like so, yeah, all the ghouls are based off classic Universal monsters. Do you have a, a list of them? <laughs> We've got uh, Fanti who is, uh, I think her name is Phantasma in it, Fanti, and she's she's the ghost, like a typical ghost. She can go through walls. Her dad is the phantom, meant to be the phantom of the opera. Who wasn't actually a phantom. Who wasn't actually a phantom. Like, <laughs> yeah, Eric was there's... an actual person that was just hideously scarred when We think the there's uh, some copyright stuff. I, we, we think so. He's because... voiced by Frank Welker. He vo Frank, who voices Fred and now does also voice Scooby a lot, Voices a lot of little characters throughout this, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not even made clear in the film that he's the Phantom of the Opera. I learnt this just by going on IMDb trivia. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, that's who he's meant to be. And we have Winnie the Werewolf, and her dad is obviously meant to be, you know, just like the Universal Monster Werewolf. And we have Elsa Frankenstein. Not Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, guess who her dad is? Frankenstein, yeah. yeah. Well, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> she obviously called Elsa, Elsa Lanchester. Lanchester. Lanchester, Lanchester was the, the bride of Frankenstein. Bride. She looks like the bride of Frankenstein. Kind of hinted that maybe Elsa, you know, that the, the bride was her mum, potentially. Yeah, but then it's like, she has stitches, so did they build a child? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. And then we also have Sabella, who is the vampire of, of the ghouls, and her daddy is Count Dracula. Dracula. What was the guy who played Dracula in... Uh, Hamilton Camp. Ham Hamilton Camp. He yeah. is in this, but not as Dracula. No, he does. He voices one of the dads, doesn't he? Yeah. Wait, does he not voice the no. Phantom? Does he? I thought that was Frank I, Welker. I can't I'll double remember. check. I'll double check that. Frank Welker voices matches. Does he not? Yeah, he also dragon. voices uh, one of the dads. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll double maybe check. Maybe go. Maybe it is the Phantom. But Hamilton, he voices one of the dads. One of the dads. Then there's also there's uh, the mummy. Oh yeah, there's mummy. We have little Tannis. Um, who's yeah, yeah. like she's the cutest little thing like she's the youngest so one so she was mummified and... as a 
very, very young child. Very young age. And we Googled it because the name Tanis, obviously, it, there, there's a connection to, to Egypt. I can't quite remember exactly what it is. And yeah, her uh, her mummy daddy, as she calls him, is is the mummy. The, the you know, the Karloff-esque mummy. Yeah. One thing that's fine is interesting because they do meet all the parents at one point as like a parents' day type thing. Yeah, it's like a party. It's very clear that canonically this has nothing to do with Reluctant Werewolf because it's a very different version of Dracula and the other <laughs> monsters that we see in that film. Yeah. But also obviously in Reluctant Werewolf, he has no Dracula has no memory of knowing Shaggy. Shaggy. Yeah, he has no <laughs> idea who he is. Even though he he looks and sounds like that Dracula. Yeah, he looks a bit different, a different skin colour yeah. and stuff like that. I'm not sure what the canonically what these specials are. We know Reluctant Werewolf is potentially it is in, canon now. Well, it's interesting. It's referenced. As well, because at the beginning of the film, as Shaggy, Scrappy and Scooby are driving to the ghoul school, they're in a red van. They're not in the mystery machine. They're in their own just kind of generic red camper van thing that they have. Um, it looks a bit better than the mystery machine. It does, it? yeah. It looks well, we know cool, Novel is a, it comes from money. He comes from money. And also, you know, kind of matches Shaggy's red top, not the green one that he wears throughout this. Um, but yeah, that got me thinking, you know, talking about what's canon, what isn't. If Shaggy has this other van, like his own mode of transport, then is that is this set before he meets the Mystery Inc? Or is this just, like does he have his own van kind of in so again, between? They're not, they're not referenced. They're not referenced at all. The the other the other part, members of the yeah. gang. So yeah, it's just it's an ongoing question. Yeah. We'll never like know. I said, Frank Welker voices Matches, who is essentially the pet of Fucking this school, who's a little dragon, and he is he kind of speaks a bit like Mutley. Like yeah. And he is, he's just this really aggressive little dragon. He's, and, he's like a cantankerous little shit. He just sets fire to everything. He just likes the Scooby. He just likes to cause havoc. And honestly, he's the highlight of the entire yeah. film for me. I love his just, I love any scene that he's in. I love him. I love it. He's, like, he's got his little tuft of hair as well. He's just dead cute. Yeah. <laughs> and him and Scrappy end up coming. One thing friends. I don't get. <laughs> Again, it's like, how much do we analyze this? <laughs> the military school seems to be unaware that they are monsters, that they are ghouls. But when they play volleyball, I actually do quite like when they actually do come to play volleyball. I think it's a, it's it's a like lot of fun. It's like halfway through the film as well. Yeah, it doesn't go on for too long. No. It's kind of fun. They actively see, like, Willie go through the net as a phantom. We see Sabella turn into a bat. Turn into a bat, a bat. But they're always like, oh. Like, they're always just kind of shocked and just kind of pass it off. But then, like, just don't see through think the things are supernatural but no. there's literally a werewolf on the pitch there's a werewolf on the pitch who, there's a like, mummy on the pitch there's a ghost <laughs> there's a ghost who's like going through the net the headmistress who's like, voiced by the mum from oh my god yeah the mum is voiced by Glynis Johns who is the mum in Mary Poppins she's great for the we... <laughs> sister suffragette but she has like a thing type hand you know that's like oh it's from like the, family, yeah, like yeah, thing yeah. just thing. called hand who um, follows her around and like an octopus who's a butler it's like how do you not know that this is a supernatural place? It's, it's really... I'm it, looking into it too much. It's, it is like a... Yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, because yeah. like when weird, <clears throat> like outwardly weird stuff happens, the boys do, like kind of acknowledge it. But yeah, as you say, they also just brush it off. Uh, sir, cadet. I must be going batty. And oh my God, there are so many fucking bat puns in this, oh, in this film. I can't stand it anytime she's on screen just... It's like, oh, fantastic. fantastic. Like, Count Dracula's daughter. Fantastic to meet you. <laughs> Dracula's? And, and like, whenever... The puns in this is... Oh, God, I, yeah. Some bits are funny, but yeah, Jesus Christ, like, the throwaway times. puns are so bad. I lost count of the amount of times when she does turn into a bat and then, like, one of the characters is a bit shocked and, like... I must be going baddie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that we get that joke so fantastic. many times. It's fantastic to meet you. Right, we got we have to talk about the sexualization of her. But like, if I was a young boy in a middle school, school next to a ghoul school, because there's a scene where like she turns into a bat and goes to get a pizza because all the food food is ghoulish food. Kind of like reluctant well. Yeah, they like their food rotten. <laughs> Except garlic, of course. And she turns into a bat, flies off, and comes back with a pizza. And I was like, if I was in a military, I was in a military school. Don't see this, but for context, if I saw like an attractive vampire turn into a bat, go off, come back with a pizza, I'd be like, oh, just bite me. <laughs> Please take me. <laughs> Give me the like, pizza and then bite. It's me. kind of unclear how old they're meant to be, but it's it's very it's, unclear. It's very creepy as to how like it's the way well, she talks. It's, it's very. 
it's seductive. seductive. It's yeah. like when she's fully grown, like, she is going to lure many a man to kill. It's like, it it's, is, yeah, it is weird. But it's I, off-putting. I registered it even when I was younger. I think they're clearly playing on, like, you know, the the idea that vampires are sexy and seductive and, you know, like, female vampires are kind of, you know, like, seductresses and femme fatales and that sort of thing. And, like, even the way she stands, like, her poise is very elegant and she shows off a little bit of, like, her lower calf. Like, her dress has a slit in it. and The child. She's a child. Well, we like, don't know how she, old yeah. this child is. Like, no, she could be she, 200 years old for all we know. Yeah. But it, it is, like... It is a bit, it is a bit strange. I do like her as a character. I do too. Uh, I do too. But, I, I like how she's the one as well that when Revolta comes back into it and starts like hypnotising all the girls to lure them away into her castle, Sibella is the one that's hardest to yeah to hypnotise just because I guess like, first of all, she's a bat. <laughs> she yeah. can just fly away. And second of all, like I guess vampires put up a bit more resistance maybe. Because they hypnotise as well. Yeah. So like Revolta wants to take the the she says that the their fathers have lost their edge. Yeah, they've all so been they want too soft. To use them to essentially conquer the world. So Take, she kidnap the daughters to get the, the fathers on board, or just kidnap the daughters. Yeah, it's a bit a bit unclear. But doesn't anyway, matter. Yeah, she, really, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> but yeah, <it's, laughs> it doesn't. It was just really because she's definitely clearly the oldest one, more of the ringleader of this group of ghoul girls. Yeah. But it's just it's really odd, and like I said, it's quite off putting. It's, I think it's a lot of it is in the voice. Yeah, it's the way the way she talks, and even when interestingly, all of the girls they all call their fathers something different. So Sabella calls Dracula Daddy, and you know even yeah. that it's like my daddy. It, it's, I don't know. It's like you can look into that however you want. Maybe we're overthinking it a little bit, but What's like that, Fancy calls, is she actually biologically Dracula's daughter, or has he turned her? Or has he turned her? Yeah, these are like deep questions that we're just throwing out into the. I know it's this know? really silly little film. But like Fancy calls her dad father. Winnie calls her dad papa. Elsa calls Frankentine dada. Yeah. Uh, Tannis calls him. Dad, mommy, daddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they all, just a oh, nice God. little what's thing. The, they what's all the fandom called again? I, I struggle with one. Oh. Her laugh. Oh my God, oh. it broke you. It, it absolutely yeah. did. I think as I like her as a character, but I'll laugh. My God, I, can't, I can't, can't even begin to DVD emulate it. went out the window. Your daughter would like to play her latest composition for you. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, you have to put up with mine all the time as well. But hers is something. It's so shrilly, and <laughs> which makes sense for her yeah. character. I love her as a character. She's probably one of my favorites, actually. Like she's kind of, in terms of age, physically, you'd probably put her the same age as Sabella. Like they're two of the. But eldest. is she dead? Like, is she dead? But she's 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 clearly dead. Like she's yeah. trapped in that age forever. So but how old again? How old is she? <laughs> she's also just kind of like I don't know, like away with the fairies a little bit. Like she's just so eternally. Yeah, like, does that to you? Yeah, but, yeah. She's just driven mad. Yeah, I do like because obviously naturally there's many opportunities for Scooby and Shaggy to be scared constantly. They they seem to feel, find, yeah. get things quite. They get along and things seem fairly normal. Then there'll be something that spooks them even tiny bit, and it's like yeah. Oh god, I think he only stays is because he signed a contract. Yeah. So he kind of can't leave. But yeah, it sounded contract. My favorite bit is when all the the fathers come and they they said to like each one take a turn in threatening Shaggy on their way out of it if anything was to happen to their daughters. Happen to their daughters. And I just really like all of that because I, yeah, it's fun. They're the group of people that you just absolutely do not want. To, to be yeah, fr- be on the bad side. <laughs> Dracula's daughter. It, a name just keeps. Sibella. I, I don't know why I can't rem- hold on to her name. Sibella. Sibella. We thought that she must be half human. Yeah. Because in this, it clearly shows that Dracula can only come out at night. Yeah. She is seen throughout in the day for the majority the, of this movie. In the day. So does that mean maybe... She was turned, maybe. She was turned. Or... As a mother. Or if we're going by the Lost Boys logic, maybe... She, she hasn't killed yet. She hasn't killed yet. And that's why she can be out in the day. She's not fully vamp. Or it could just be like she's not mature yeah. enough yet. I, I don't know. If she was born a vampire, then maybe it takes a while to like... Develop into you ever remember full that old vampire? CBBC show about uh, the son of Dracula? Young, I think it was called like Young Dracula, and he played. Oh, he's called yeah. Vladimir. I never saw he, it, but he I, could go out in the day because he's only a half vampire because he's not old enough. And it's, yeah, that I've not thought about that in nearly twenty years until this very and moment. And <laughs> came into my until head until this very moment. Yeah, yeah, I remember enjoying it. Maybe it's a similar thing. Could be a similar thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only dawned on me this time watching it as well. Like she, ha- she's out during the day all the time. Yeah. It's a, it's a 
It's a fun one. Oh, it is. It's, just, like, it's this, the sheer amount of puns. The repeated jokes. Like, yeah. I sometimes repeat jokes at you just if I think you've not heard them. Yeah. But we heard the fang joke the first the time. The fang joke, the fucking bat joke so many times. The um, food jokes are all the same. I do like the uh, production design, again, you know, of um, the Grimwood School. So it's it's very traditionally spooky, you know, like... Um, A Monday comparison would be Evermore in... Oh, Nevermore. In uh, Wednesday. In, in Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. we did. We pointed this out at the time. Yeah, it's like similar, similar sort of idea as well in that, yes, the school is traditionally very spooky. It's a school that is specifically for... You know, like in this case, ghouls. Obviously, Nevermore and Wednesday. It's um, outcasts. you know, like outcasts and supernatural entities and that kind of thing. So it's, it's similar, um, and interestingly, a, a spin-off about Grimwood Girls was in the works, but it just never quite. Yeah, I think they've been referenced, the or they've appeared in something not too long ago. Yeah, because I think that would have been really interesting. Yeah, but I think weirdly, yeah, Wednesday. As in, like you know, the Tim Burton Netflix show. It's like, it's like it, it makes for an interesting really like, comparison. Separate from Scooby Doo, I think the the story about them would still work. And I can only imagine, like, if, you know, growing up as a young girl, what would be like to see, yeah, those type of characters, like classic, like young female versions of classic monsters. Yeah, sure. It's been re- must have been really cool. It's quite. It must have been. It's very unique. Again, the main gang hasn't seen supernatural things, but Scooby and Jaggy have dealt with a lot of They've supernatural stuff. They've been through a lot of shit. I said there's not too much Scrappy in this for me. I actually quite like Scrappy in this one because he's just not phased by any of this and he just wants to Yeah, Shaggy's do the just like not asked at all. Like when they're introduced to the ghouls, he's just like, yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> and we all Shaggy and Scooby are just like running amok throughout the entire school trying to get away. Yeah. Uh, Shaggy knows ballet. Oh, yeah. So we've seen it. He's a race car driver and a mechanic in Reluctant World. Now he knows... Ballet, apparently, is really sporty. Yeah, yeah, he knows he knows his stuff. Also... Uh, so does Scooby. Scooby knows the ballet as well. Yeah, Colonel Calloway, who runs the oh, military it's basically school, Dick Dastardly. Put them side by side, and, like, yeah. you'll... Th- they, they, it, it literally is. It's Dick Dastardly. Different voice, <laughs> but physically, it's the same. Like, even the weird, like, you know, this very thin, twirly moustache yeah. that they have as well. So I don't I don't know why. Yeah, it was, like, I, it was fun... Rewatching it, as I say, it, it was never my favorite, even when I was younger. I just I remember like I watched it. it all the time, and when we were looking at we were looking at reviews and YouTube comments, and that was the main thing. Is this was on all the all time. time. That's literally a and point that's why on... I know what it is. I've seen it so many yeah. times because it was always on TV. It was just always on. Like that was even a thing now on IMDb trivia. Someone's someone said like this was this was on Boomerang in the early two thousands a lot. <laughs> like that's now cast as trivia uh, trivia for this for this film. Um, yeah, I mean there were. I don't know. It does drag a little bit, but I don't know if I don't know if it dragged when I was younger. I think again, it's just you know us watching it as you know like two th- nearly thirty year old. I will be thirty by the time this comes out. <laughs> yeah, um, but it is fun. Like the Revolta plot line doesn't really go anywhere. It's, ultimately, I'm glad it had another plot line because it, if it was just about the volleyball game, would have been a bit meh. It could have just been a short special then and be yeah. done. The Revolta plot line, like as soon as the girls are captured. I kind of got a bit bored. You, yeah, you kind of. I was kind of like dozing a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I do like the uh, the mirror monster. Mirror monster. That is Frank Welker as That's well. That's Frank Welker. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. one of like the three roles he plays in so a mirror monster version of Shaggy, who actually yeah. looks a little bit like what Shaggy would become in the next one. And then they have we have the Grim Creeper, who's like Revolta's little green looks slimy like a pickle, minion. A, a pickle with vines. Well, he looks like one of the pumpkins in which, which is the, ghost. Yeah, with the, he does. You know, like crawly, even the face. Is very similar. So obviously this came first. It's like reu- so reusing assets. Reusing the assets there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I think it's a really fun idea. It's I, not I, one I'll jump to rewatch soon. No. I guess no. more it's like if there's ever like, you know, young family members around or whatever and you want to put something on maybe. Oh, for sure. Like, you know, I, I can't. Could put, we could put any of these on and it's going to keep them entertained. I can't wait to watch all of these with, with kids and see and see what they think. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad we, we did. Oh, put the live that. action one as soon as they're a bit old and they realise how, how sexy it is. How raunchy that actually <laughs> is. Yeah, and just... <laughs> that's their sexual awakening, <laughs> Linda Cardinelli. <laughs> or Matthew Lillard. It's, it's fun. It's silly. It goes on a bit too long. Jokes were repeated a bit too the often. The jokes but were repeated a lot and that was like it's the quite, main downside. When you place it around, like, with all the other Scooby-Doo films, it's very... It is quite unique. And it is, and yeah. It's a fun idea, if they had done a spin-off, I 
the spin-off. I don't know why I said it like that. The spin-off. The spin-off. <laughs> to, to Matt Berry. <laughs> I, uh, I, I would have watched it because I, quite, like, I think some of the characters they set up are, quite, are interesting. I do. I think the basic concept is, is really interesting. And, and yeah, like you can, in a way, directly compare it to, to you know, a very now popular show. Um, do you think... Uh, her name's gone again. Sibella. <laughs> the, the, sex, the sexy vampire girl. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think she was kind of like the framework for the Hex Girls later on? Oh, that's interesting. Because they're also very vampire-y. Yeah. Uh, seductive. The, the, Just the, a bit older, so it makes it okay. They're women. So it's yeah. absolutely fine. But potentially, potentially, yeah. Because like, when you look at Sibella's face, facially, I think there's probably a few similarities there. Yeah. Especially the one in, you know, the Hex Girl, the blonde one, uh, Dusk. Yeah. I think, is it Dusk? Or, yeah. Yeah, I think they are quite yeah. similar. I think Winnie might actually be my favourite out of the girls in the, Winnie the werewolf. Lowell. Oh, I can't remember the, the actress that voiced her, but I do know that this was her last uh, film because she died very young of cancer. Yeah. Like, so, I think she died before the film was released, even. Yeah, but no, yeah, Winnie's, Winnie's fun. I, just, I liked her. Just, the howl. Yeah, Ow? howling all howling all the time. And, yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I also just like, I like the design. Yeah, it's very wholesome. It's like, you know, all the girls get on with each other in the school. Like, they're all friends, despite all the age differences. They all look out for each other. There's no vampires versus the werewolf. They're all just... They just get along. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're we just... We referenced this... We did reference this film when we talked about Peter and the Black Lagoon because... The, the, oh, shit! The yeah. point that makes Scooby and Shaggy leave, it's after every fi- victory's all done and there's some new arrivals. Yeah. One of them, for some reason, you see Godzilla's foot and like, there's a little dinosaur. I can't remember all of them, but there's a... Creature from the Black Lagoon is there. Yeah. But he's orange again, copyrighted. With a, ch- a child in tow, a little girl in tow, presumably. Yeah. Um, well, with all because it's a girl's school. Of course it is a girl's school, yeah. Um, we watched a review yeah. of this, and the, the line that really made me laugh was a military school, an all boy military school right next door to an all girl ghoul school. There's no ridiculous storylines that could happen there. <laughs> I know. Sabella, <laughs> got it. She is. Absolutely, at some point when she gets a bit older, eating all those boys. She actually, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, ab- well, absolutely. Winnie has once a bad she, month and just... Once she comes into maturity, yeah. I th- that's another thing, like, you know, we're saying about the vampire thing in the... Um, Sabella is, like, we don't know if she's half vampire or what because she's just, she can go out... She eats pizza. Yeah, but Winnie also is just constantly a werewolf. Yeah. She doesn't transform into a werewolf every now and then. She's just constantly in well, werewolf Well, that continues state. on in uh, Reluctant Wealth when Shaggy so, becomes a werewolf. He's stuck so as a werewolf. Scooby-Doo doesn't maybe get enough credit for rewriting the rules of uh, vampires and werewolf mythology. Yeah. Maybe. I think it, it's very much lending for me the idea that these ghouls were born the way that they, they are. Born a mummy. How like Born a mummy. Um, born a vampire born a werewolf the ghost obviously probably not <laughs> I don't know really? I don't know who, who knows, knows? Who, who the hell knows anymore yeah so it's it's fun I, I don't see this one getting this one doesn't get talked about as much no it doesn't I feel like um, it's like not a lot stuck in between Boo it. Brothers and Reluctant Werewolf which I think are remembered quite a lot especially Reluctant Werewolf yeah it's harmless isn't it, it? Is, it's, it's totally harmless dragged a little bit but again I think that's obvi- it's obviously why um, but I still really like it. I've got a lot of fond memories of it. Um, and it's always nice, you know, when you rewatch something that you haven't in a while and then suddenly something starts coming back to you and you're like, oh, you know, I do. I remember this. I remember that character. I remember this moment. That's always a lot of fun. Yeah. And I've, I've loved doing that with these. I suppose it would be Boo Brothers next just because we've got the DVD. I really would love to do Boo Brothers next. I'd love... Let's talk about Shaggy's uh, fa- dark family history. There's a lot to say for it. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Again, if you like these Scooby-Doo's, let us know. So keep suggesting them to us. Like we do have a, an actual list of ones to work through. Yeah, we do. We do. Before we even can touch on episodes. Yep. But yeah, these are these are fun for us. Yeah. We always like throwing these in every now and then. Yeah. But yeah, we'll uh we'll see you next week, guys. Bye. This was, this was fantastic. <laughs> I'm not gonna I don't have to listen to I don't have to hear that <laughs> for years now. <laughs>